it's my pleasure today to have Suzanne Gargan, who is involved with Junior League Activities mm -hmm. Officer. President, share. Ash, I guess so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so many people don't know what all you all do. You all really stay under the radar. You don't toot your own horn. So I have you here today because I'm going to share with your help some of the things you've done to make our children have a higher and a better quality of life. I am so grateful for what you all do and I hope you will share that with your organization. Junior League has been around for a long, long time yes. in our nation, hasn't yes. it? Tell us a little bit about that organization. Sure. Your organization. Absolutely. The um, Junior League of San Angelo, actually, um, we, we started with 12 charter members here in 1946. And then, uh, but the organization as a whole, the um, AJLI, which is Association of Junior Leagues International, um, started with Mary Harriman in 1901 in New York. And um, she was a young newlywed socialite, and um, there was an influx, of course, of immigrants into New York. And they saw that children were poorly clothed, they were didn't have proper nutrition, didn't know how to read, weren't getting proper education. So she called her debutante friends and they formed the first Junior League. And it was um, purely, it's a charitable organization and um, has been around since 1901. So it has a long legacy, is now in four countries, um, UK, Canada, Mexico, as well as the US. And it's primarily, if not totally women? It is all women. <laughs> we have to get things done. <laughs> well, what you have done, this organization in this city is absolutely a blessing. And the two programs right now that you all are doing in a big way are Food for Kids and a, clo a, a coat Closet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this city is has is tackling hunger mm -hmm. with partnerships unlike I've ever seen in my life. I think we are a model for other cities because it, one organization mm -hmm. can't do it. The school mm -hmm. can't do it by themselves, the churches, and people enjoy working together. Mm -hmm. And the piece that you all do is not being met by anybody else, mm -hmm. and it's weekends. Yes. So a few years ago, maybe three or so, some of your peers in your organization came and talked to me about mm -hmm. this. Uh, and I was, I had never heard of such a thing, mm -hmm. how to help kids have some food on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, w a pilot, I love to pilot, you mm -hmm. can get a few of your mistakes worked out. And you all took on a few schools, yes. uh, three or four. Three or four. Mm -hmm. And you explain what the program is that has now spread. Sure. It's, um, we started our first program in 2006. Okay. And um, we, had, we had decided, we had heard from other doing research on projects. Um, we try to bring in new projects, new areas of concern that we can problem solve. And a few, very few um, junior leagues throughout the um, United States were working on this pilot program. It's basically, and they're all called different and different, different names in different communities, but basically were weekend backpack food program mm -hmm. for kids who were at risk of being hungry over the weekend. So when our group, and one of them was Crystal King, who's teaching over at the high school, was our first chair of this, of this project. And we were allowed to take um, a few of the, the most critical um, schools that had the highest number of um, free and reduced lunch yes. children. So we um, started that program and we worked closely with the food bank because we have to get proper food and it has to match the, um, the um, necessary nutrition and it also has to be shelf stable. We're dealing with children who may or may not have electricity or access to refrigeration. Right and here in San right Angelo. Right here in San Angelo. And um, so it was tricky getting, I know a lot of times people would look and they'd go and help us with stuffing and they'd be like, 
you know, beanie weenies and why can't we give them fresh fruit? And I'm like, well, they may not be able to yes. have a place for it. So yes. we do give them fruit, but a lot of times it's canned and it's it's certainly something that they can open on their own. So many times these elementary kids go home and there's no one there. Yes. So they're able to, to on the weekends, you know, fix them a quick peanut butter sandwich. And, uh, but through this program, what we found is one, there definitely was a need and um, there was an interest with parents allowing their children to participate in this program. And then more importantly, thanks to all of your wonderful food service workers and counselors and principals, they were a great partner in allowing this program to come and be a part of the school. So since then, we are in every single elementary school in San Angelo. And to explain how do how is it determined who gets to participate? Mm -hmm. You all don't determine that no. because by and large you don't know the children. Okay. You just mentioned the school social worker or mm -hmm. uh, counselors yes. are the ones who uh, know the children. Mm -hmm. They know kids that are going home with very little right. uh, there. Certainly in often cases very little healthy. And so I worried I always have to ask myself, how do we, are we fair? Um, that we don't leave out those that need it and then also aren't wasting uh, mm -hmm. services to maybe a family that doesn't need it as much as this right. family. But I will tell you that in this case, because of y'all's process and the partnership with mm -hmm. our counselors and social workers, I have not, ha there has not been a hiccup. Mm -hmm. The truly the children that need this mm -hmm. get access to this. And I don't get, I was afraid, but ready for it, that I would get calls saying, well, why is that child and not my child? And mm -hmm. I don't get that because mm -hmm. I think people have just opened their hearts and minds to mm -hmm. we're trying to do this with sure. you, this partnership you all mm -hmm. packing and providing and delivering it mm -hmm. to the school in backpacks and those children just uh, quietly before they walk mm -hmm. out the door go by the counselor's office or the at risk mm -hmm. uh, social worker uh, office and pick up their additional backpack to take home and uh, you all a couple of times have uh, brought uh, samples of what it is that's in there mm -hmm. and it is non-perishable mm -hmm. it's healthy raisins mm -hmm. uh, dried fruits or um, some uh, nut products that right. are give them protein mm -hmm. um, I, I just that is it is a marvelous program. And the fact that a small number of people have been able to take it to all 17 elementaries, yes. mm -hmm. because so also people may not realize every elementary has yes. some children that need this. Yes. yes, the process is, it's actually very simple and it's very thought out. Um, at the beginning of the school year, um, there's a form letter that are, is sent to every parent who has a child that's on free and reduced um, lunches. And they um, are allowed to opt in or opt out. They do not have to participate in the program, but we certainly encourage them to if they want to. And during the year, should a child arise that a counselor or a teacher feels like they would be um, a good participant for this, we will send that same letter. Luckily, most of the time, if, if they're on a free or reduced lunch plan, we're catching the vast majority of the ones that might need this program. So that's that's the great thing. And um, but right now we're um, we're sending about 500 um, meals home a, a weekend. So um, that's that's a big chunk, and I think that's the most shocking thing when we go and talk to business leaders here in town. Um, to help support our programs and our events. That's the thing that's most shocking to them is how many children are at risk of going hungry over the weekend. We're not talking about they may not just get a big four course meal. We're talking about they will not get fed until they get to school mm -hmm. on Monday. Mm -hmm. And um, we get wonderful letters from the counselors, from, from, the, from the teachers, and what we're so excited about. Of course, we love that the kids were coming and they were looking healthier and, and happier and, and, and more focused. But what we're noticing is those same children the next year are testing better on standardized mm -hmm. tests, on their classroom work, and all it takes is just eating 
over the weekend. It's just yes. so simple, but it is, it takes a partnership and you're right, not one organization can do it on their own. That's correct. All right, now let's switch to a fairly new project with coats. Well, we've actually had student closet for a long time. Years ago, we did what was called a back to school bonanza. And um, we would um, have our old thrift store would be full of children and their parents and we had a line of dentists and doctors and um, you'd get a new pair of jeans and new shirt and socks and underwear and various other shoes and, and things to get you through the school year to give you a good start. And um, that program was handed off and to the Boys, Girl, uh, Boys and Girls Club. And, um, and I, I know the program is not what it, it hasn't been able to grow just because of funding and every, mm -hmm. everything else mm -hmm. that every other agency is dealing with. So we have always kept our student closet, uh, which was basically an emergency program. Anyone, um, counselors, a social worker can call and say, we've got a family, they need you know, a pair of jeans, or we get sometimes um, a student is being made fun of in class because they, their shoes stink. And so we can immediately go and get a brand new pair of shoes, mm -hmm. socks. So they have those basic necessities so they can focus on learning. And um, so we um, unfortunately have taken on a lot more of these emergency needs. We used to average about 20 cases a year and we're already at 30 and it's December. Mm -hmm. So I think the influx of more children coming in and, and we just, we have more needs. Yes. And, um, and it's everything from a coat to shoes. And that's the great thing about this program. It's purely, it's not based on income. Um, we've had people who've had a fire and it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it, and then also just people who've come in in the CPS system and they need to get to school and they mm -hmm. need some proper clothes. So it's, it's a great program that we're able to hit the ground running without having to do any paperwork. We're not an agency. We're able to just go to a store and get the kids what they need and drop it off to the proper people. Good for you, Suzanne. Do you envision, um, have you, are you all in the process of brainstorming your next uh, idea? We are. We actually are. <laughs> okay, share just a little to whet our appetite. Well, we, we haven't um, jumped on any um, exact plans right now, but we're certainly um, looking at an epidemic that we're seeing um, with young girls um, being um, taken advantage of in, in, uh -huh. in junior high and high school and have put them in positions that they're having to become mothers or at least um, take on responsibilities that they're not quite ready for, and it affects their future. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a huge epidemic that's not just in San Angelo, it's everywhere. And it's not just, I think a lot of times we address either um, abuse or pregnancy, but it's beyond that. It's, it's building up the self-esteem in those girls and, mm -hmm. and making sure they know what their self-worth is and what their future is. And um, I, I'm hoping we're, it's another partnership that there's some great partners here in town that we'll be able to, to work with and hopefully come up with some modules and curriculum that would be meaningful. So, Good for you yeah, all. and there's a lot of other projects too that we'll always continue with our Food to Kids and our Student Closet that just those alone can fill our time and budgets, but we know that there's new frontiers and that's what we've always done. And, and all this, you know, over 65 years of history of Junior League, we have focused on what are the issues in our community and how can we make our community better. Good for you. Approximately how many members? active members do you have right now? We have 100 active members, okay. yes, and 300 um, pro, um, sustaining members, and okay. those are our retirees. <laughs> certainly, yes. certainly. Well, I can't thank you enough. This food to kids for the on the weekends is um, absolutely meeting a need that had not been met, and I don't think is being met in many communities. Right. I can't thank you enough. We're so glad to have you and your family in our city. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, uh, you're, you and your husband are already contributing uh, unselfishly to seeing needs, and I, we thank you. Thank you for having us.